can Pavin deal with that sort of pressure? Yeah, I think Pavin's seen it, but Tony loves that 3-4 bear, screaming off both edges. We're going to see if Pavin can pick it up. Let's head inside Pizza Hut Stadium for our last game of the day. Shout out to everybody on Twitch and YouTube who's been hanging out with us. It is young Tony and Pavin for the right to be the AFC West Divisional Champion. It's going to be young Tony starting off with the ball first. Let's look at playbooks. Pavin running that West Coast offense. Yeah, both these guys are going to be in that West Coast. Pavan loves his West Coast. He's been running for years now. He made his deep run in the tournament last year in this West Coast. Expect to be high-powered from Pavan. Flip side for young Tony. West Coast offense, Dolphins defense. We didn't copy it. They actually are used to the same ones. <laughs> yeah, it's a mirror match here. Tony, Tony, one of the best defenders, too. I think, you know, Mo said this earlier on the stream. Tony's respected, but he's not respected to that next level where people he's overlooked a little bit. And I think, you know, he deserves way much more respect than he gets. All right, Tyler, here's the question. This is the one that everybody's asking in the chat. Pavan, Pavan. We've heard it both. Yeah. We've heard Pavan <laughs> say it both ways. Which one is it? I know. I'm trying to get myself to say Pavan, but then Pavan just rolls off my tongue sometimes. So <laughs> I got to get it down. All right. Well, we're going to roll with Pavan. <laughs> I'll see if we can get through the game. All right. I'm trying. Uh, on the other side, it's young Tony. There's no question on how to pronounce that one. That one's pretty oh, yeah. easy. Yeah. It's going to be Tony with the ball first. Uh, in that semifinal game, you and I were watching that one on the side set. Offense didn't look as crisp as we've seen it look in the past. No, it didn't. It really didn't. He made a couple of uh, mistakes that he shouldn't have made. But his defense looked phenomenal. We'll see how he's going to get ball first here. Let's see how we can uh, start the game off. Running out of that gun bunch. Andrew Luck at the helm. Saw him use Jermaine Gresham at tight end. Usually he's a blocker, but sometimes he sneaks out of the backfield and is able to make a catch. Underneath throw, easy rhythm play, picks up a yard. Yeah, Pavin bringing the heat on that first play. Tony rolls out, hits a little dragon, and he threw a little too late and uh, couldn't pick up much yardage off it. I think the route that I've seen the most successful is that backside dig out of the bunch. It's, it's sort of the one that seems to get open most if you have time. Yeah, we've definitely seen Skimbo abuse that play a lot. He loves that backside dig, and a lot of these guys go into that play. Only set a four, quick throw right up the seam. John Ross with the catch and coverage. Give him 17 on the first down. Yeah, another popular play there. Run that mesh post with the streak. A little quick throw. First that one four six. You can't really get there unless your user in a safety. And a little risky throw, but Tony's able to get it in there. First down for Tony. First drive of the game here in our final game of today. Luck dropping back, pressure picked up nicely. Looking over the middle, he's got a man wide open. That's John Ross. He's been living and dying by that diving catch. Yeah, Pavlin tried to uh, use a rush right there, got picked up. Tony sat in the pocket, made a nice read over the middle. Big play. Pavlin, of course, winning last year's club championship. Great offense, known though for that 3-3-5 defense. Looping that defender, able to get a ton of pressure. First down and 10, Luck underneath, finding Marvin Harrison, give him two. Yeah, good user right there by Pavin. Looks like he was going to go back on that post, but then he came down on the drag. I was only able to pick up two. Good defense right there by Pavin. This is young Tony's offense, though. He, he, he will dink and dunk his way until you get too aggressive defensively. He'll hit you over the top for a big play. Second out and eight. Luck with those three abilities. Rolling out. Underneath, finding Harrison, but he is not going to get in bounds. Maybe sh looking for the rack egg. Maybe should have possession caught it. Yeah, probably should have possessioned it right there to get a couple yards. But Pavin is playing great defense. You know, his user looks phenomenal right now. He's making Tony take the underneath stuff. And the thing with Tony is like he has all the talent in the world. We know this. It's just about him playing smart, managing the game correctly, not making mistakes when you get down here towards the end zone. Third down and eight. Pavin looking to get a stop on defense. Ross on the outside of that bunch. Haven't seen anything from CJ2K yet. He's on the left hip of Andrew Luck. Dropping back to pass on third and eight. Waiting all the time in the world. He's going to try to take the underneath. And Shaq Griffin's going to say, no way, Jose. And Pavin's going the other way. Can Gresham make a play? Wave goodbye. Griffin's to the end zone. Pavin, a defensive touchdown. Huge pick six by Pavin right there with that Shaq Griffin. Nice lurk over the middle. And what a way to start the game on defense for Pavin. Is there any better way to start a key game with all the bright lights on you than with a defensive touchdown? That's the best feeling in the world, Nick. It really is. To try to get to the final eight here, $20,000 on the line, and to start the game with a pick six is huge for your confidence. What a start for our defending champ. A mistake from young Tony. And just like that, it is 7-0. Let's take a look at this Snickers replay one more time. Picked off by Shaq Griffin. Yeah, there's nothing right there for Tony at open at all, and he kind of, you know, forced it a little bit. 
He thought he could get it in there, but just nothing there. Shaq Griffin with a huge pick six. Andrew Luck could have used a Snickers before he made that throw. It is now 7 nothing. Pavin on top, and he hasn't even had to touch the ball on offense. Let's see if Tony can get CJ2K going. He'll pick up a yard. Yeah, if you're Tony, you just got to slow down. A little adversity to start the game, but there's plenty of time here. You know you're one of the best players. Just settle down. Get back in your offensive groove. Tony had such a great performance at the Classic. 13th out of that 500-plus field. So you know he's feeling confident with the game. Lock on second and nine. Looking right side, that's Marvin Harrison. Picks up a couple. When you talk about getting into the Madden Bowl, this is a huge game for both these guys as well. Pavin did not have a good showing in the Madden Classic. I believe he came in around 129th, 130th. Tony did make the final 16. And a win here could definitely get him closer to that Madden Bowl. Pavin really needs to make a run in this tournament to get there. Luck in the shotgun, Sean. Ross split out to the left, quick throw right side, Devin Hester. First time we've called his name today. Boy, how good has Devin Hester been for every player we've seen today in the AFC? Oh yeah, he's a beast. So much speed, really is. And nice little quick read right there by Tony. Poppin bringing the heavy blitz, hits him over the middle. Poppin the number three earner in the MCS, 129,000. Number three earner, excuse me, in this tournament, $129,525. $100,000 coming last year from the club championship. How much pride do you think Pavin has in being the defending champ? How much does that fuel him? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, this is a kid that wants to do this full time. You know, he wants to build his brand, wants to be one of the best players in the world. And he takes this very serious. He treats this like a business, which, he's, which you need to do if you want to be one of the best players. Five EA major event appearances, one belt looking for number two. Tony, though, stands in the way. Second down and six. Luck dropping back to pass. He's going to look right side. Just gets it over the head of Troy Palomalo. A dangerous throw, but Andrew Luck with a beautiful dot. A little scary pass right there by Tony. He had the wide open drag underneath. Didn't take it. Got it over the head of Troy Palomalu, but definitely a risky pass, but works out for Tony. And you know Tony, especially here at the clubs, his EMB crew back in the players' lounge. They're pulling for him. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody with such a big cheering section. Oh, yeah, for sure. EMB guys, they all love Tony. They all support him. His dad's here. Everyone's supporting young Tony. Yeah, as we see, nice defense right there by Pavin. Talking about crews, T. Davis, like, how important is it to have a group of guys to lab with and to support you? Oh, it's, it's so important. Getting reps with the best players in the world every day and, and getting their advice and talking in group chats, things like that is just so crucial to take your game to the next level. Might be the underrated part of the game of professional Madden. As we head to the second quarter, 7-0, Pavin on top. Tony's second drive. First one ended in a touchdown. Unfortunately, it wasn't for him. Luck dropping back to pass. Dumbing it off underneath. Marvin Harrison gives him a little okey doke Looking like a matador out there, and he'll pick up 16. Yeah, nice stick work right there by Tony. And Pavin's just bringing everyone. He's, he's forcing Tony to make a read on him. And Tony's doing a good job of it here on this drive. Pavin was actually one of the, he had the 29th ranked blitz frequency percentage. Only blitz 29% through the ladders. Looking back at the end zone, that's tough coverage, but Tony's making plays. John Ross with the catch. Little jump ball looking like basketball. Yeah, Tony living life on the edge right there. I mean, kind of a bad read, honestly, but he's able to come down with it for a huge touchdown. If you're Pavin, that's got to be, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt a lot. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. And Tony is both of them. Right there, a little bit of Lady Luck, Andrew Luck on his side. Yeah, very true. Definitely a scary read right there. Now here we go, tied seven, tied seven and seven. Let's see what Pavin has on offense now. He, we haven't seen him on offense really much because he had that pick six to take the lead. So he's gonna be in this West Coast bunch as well. You're gonna see a lot of this Andrew Luck, Dashing Dead Eye Escape artist. He's not. I mean, again, you know the guys running the gum bunch. They're not looking to run the ball a lot. He was the number 30th ranked rushing yards per game through the ladders, only 37 yards per game. That's just not his game, though. He's going to look to air it out. Oh, yeah. He loves to air it out. Uh, that's been his thing for the last couple of years. Now, one of the best, too. Very patient in the, as, a, as a passer. And we're going to see a uh, delay a game here while he said his audibles. Yeah, tell, this is a gentleman's agreement. Uh, you know, maybe it's the first time we've talked about it today. But, you know, for the people who are just tuning in for the first time, why is there a delay a game? Why are people declining that? 
Yeah, so just to give your opponents some time to set their audibles, just a gentleman's agreement. Most, has got, most of the guys in the man community allow that. Just to give yourself more time to set your audibles for both sides. First down to 10, luck outside of the pocket. He has a man underneath. This is what we saw from Tony in that semifinal. He's going to send the heat, and it's going to be guys like Troy Polamalu. Yeah, in this 3 4 bear, he decides to use a rush right there with Troy Polamalu. Comes in, gets the huge sack. Phenomenal stick work right there by young Tony. Near the four minute mark in the second quarter. Luck dropping back. Tony only sends three this time. Pop and looking. There just is nobody open. Now he's got B open. Everybody left. Tyreek Hill, you can't leave Tyreek Hill open. Yeah, Tony's upset with himself. He bit down on the route underneath and left the, the guy on the sideline right there. The broken play. Nice job by Pavin to recognize that. Picks up a big first down. Here's a fun fact. We usually think about Pavin as one of those guys who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He actually has the worst turnover differential of any of the final 32. Oh, wow. Minus .36. Luck out of the pocket. Stepping up. Oh, he might have had X over the top, but he's going to let Andrew Luck and that escape artist do work. Yeah, that's why that escape artist is so valuable. Nothing there. You can take off, get a big first down. That's why you use that escape artist. Seven all. Pavin able to get the touchdown off of a Shaq Griffin pick six. First time on offense in this game. Yeah, timeout taken as these guys, you can see both these players they're thinkers. They they really know these route combos. It's, it's not a feel game. It's it's an intellectual game for them. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is a chess match. Both these guys have mastered the game. This is a huge game. $20,000 to get to that final eight. We're going to see a toss play here to Tony Pollard. How often do we see, like, a pitch toss play in this meta? Yeah, I think that shows why Pavin doesn't really run the ball. You know, his first run, negative three yards. It's something you don't really see that often from him, especially in that single back doubles north. And I think he's going to come back in that gun bunch here. The three-time Raiders club champion. Luck dropping back, pressure coming, just gets it off to the tight end. Dickerson maybe gets two yards. Young Tony bringing the heat. Yeah, great defense. Pavin went with that mesh post concept, hit the flat underneath to that Dickerson tight end, but just nothing doing. Big third and 11 for both guys here. Let's see who steps up. Luck dropping back, pressure picked up nicely. Luck outside of the pocket. Looked like he had the dig wide open, but Troy Palomalu makes a play. He had the backside dig wide open. I don't know if he didn't see him or what it was, but he, I think he could have still threw it right at the end right there. But big stop for Tony right there to hold him to three. TD, that's why you bring the blitz. That's why you bring the heat, because it forces guys like Pavin, a belt winner, the defending champ, to make reads way sooner than they wanted to. Yeah, for sure. When you bring heat, you know, it forces your opponent to do something quick. You got to think fast. A lot of these guys, you know, when you're at this elite level, these guys can read that, recognize that, make a great read. But some guys can't do that. Pavan, usually one of the best at uh, recognizing that and making a good read. 10-7, Pavan on top. And now young Tony, knowing that he's not getting the ball at halftime. Minute 55, only one timeout needs to get points on this drive to still feel like he's in control. Yeah, plenty of time here. Uh, uh, but there's plenty of time also for Shaq Griffin to make a play. I don't know what young Tony was looking at, but Shaq Griffin making that play like a receiver. Man, this Shaq Griffin has been a beast for Pavan or Pavan. Oh, my goodness. I think he was in a spy right there. Try to throw the dragon underneath. What a phenomenal pick by Shaq Griffin. I think I'm going to have to put a jar out on the table every time Pavan is said. I'm going to put a dollar into it. I'll see, see if I can buy dinner at the end of the night. <laughs> Pavan with the ball. Up by three. What a change in events. Two turnovers for Tony in the first half. And here's another Tony going to the house. Tony Pollard making plays for young Tony. Yeah, that's the key to Madden right there. You get a turnover. Next play, touchdown. If you're Pavin, that's just huge for you. Tony, you can't give up that type of turnover like that. Tony's got to find a way to stop Tony. And you know, Pavin's not a runner. He didn't spend a ton of cap. Tony Pollard, one of those, I guess you'd say a budget back. The fact is he able, he's able to get a touchdown off that. It's got to be a backbreaker. Yeah, 29 cap Tony Pollard, just something he's not going to use often. And what a huge play right there. As we check out this replay, just a little sweep to the left. Tony Pollard with a, has a blocking. good amount of speed, yeah. Right up the middle for a touchdown. It doesn't matter if you had Tony Pollard, Tony the Tiger, Tony Baladucci. With that much room out there, they're going to find the end zone. Yeah. Great run right there. And here we go. Now Tony's in a... Do or die situation. You got to move the ball down the field here and get some points before half. 
Yeah, now all the more imperative. Started out the last drive with a pick. Timeout taken by Pavin. Didn't like something he saw. You see that tag up at the top, the 5-3-0. Rockin' Yuba City, California, Sacramento area. Luck outside of the pocket on first and 10. Dumps it off underneath. We're talking about how Tony's offense, it's methodical, it's surgical. The problem is when you're down by 10, you start maybe panicking a little bit. Yeah, good point, Nick. And Tony hasn't looked great on offense all day. It's a tough situation to be in right here versus the four, versus the defending champion of this whole event last year. Pavin in a great position right now. Unfortunately for Tony, he's one of the worst pass defenses yardage-wise. 126 a game given up. That puts him 30th out of 32. Luck on second and six. Let me get that That's an overthrow Let that's picked that. off by Washington. Three INTs oh. for Pavin's defense. Tony hasn't been able to get stops. Tony hasn't been able to get scores. Yeah, Pavin's look phenomenal on defense. And these are just mistakes you cannot make in these type of games if you're young Tony. You're playing one of the best players in the world. You just cannot make these mistakes and hurt yourself. What's your mindset now if you're Pavin? How aggressive are you with that 10-point lead? Yeah, well, he feels great. I mean, any points here is good, but I think he's going to try to get seven and really take control of this game. Why not give it to Tony P, Pollard? Oh, Tony Pollard's putting in work. The rookie out of Memphis is giving touchdowns to our defending club champion. Yeah, Pavin just really breaking it open now. Up 17, some minutes ago in the, in the half. Great performance so far by Pavin and just Tony. Got a feel for him. Hasn't played his best game, and you can see it. TD, there's nothing worse than... You know, the club championship, such a grind. We, we heard RG talk about over 75,000 qualifying for this one, trying to represent their team as we take a look at Tony Pollard just putting in work, just breaking tackles. I, I mean, you got 75,000 people who want to represent their teams. We're down to the final 32. There's nothing worse than being under the bright lights and playing what you know isn't your best game. Yeah, it really does hurt. You never want to see that. And Pavin just running the sweep left and right. Last two touchdowns with Tony Pollard. Doesn't have to do much on offense here. He's playing just such good defense with that Shaq Griffin. You can see him lurking with him here. Luck pressure up the middle and down goes Luck. Wilson with the sack. Pavin showing why he's one of the top defensive players. Yeah, that 11 cap or 10 cap Brandon Wilson comes in clean right there. Pavin just playing phenomenal defense. Big hit right there. Yeah, just doing everything right on defense right now. Pavin coming in with the number seven pass defense out of the 32, only giving up about 77 a game. He's done better than that here in the first half. He's forced three interceptions on top 24-7. This drive so crucial for Tony with Pavin getting the ball at halftime. Third and 22, looking for something. It was good coverage, just nowhere to go for Tony and Andrew Luck. Yeah, Tony just hoping for a prayer right there. It's really getting ugly right now. I think he's gonna punt here. But That's the other problem is when the when the pass offense isn't working, it's not like the running game where you're at least running time off the clock. He's not punting it back to Pavin with time and timeouts. Yeah, plenty of time here for Pavon's Pavin's deadly offense. So much time, two timeouts, and a bad punt too. Oh, but it's it's muffed. Devin Hester doing something I don't think anybody <laughs> has seen Devin Hester do in a while. He muffed the punt. Yeah, a little weird play right there. I thought he was going to have plenty of room. But if he picked it up right there, but he stumbled it. And then a uh, nice tackle right there. But now, yeah, Pavin, plenty of time. Two timeouts, 38 seconds. And you, you can't give up seven again here if you're Tony. The game will definitely be over if you do that. Listen, Devin Hester, this... This club championship is presented by Snickers, not Butterfingers. Can't be, <laughs> can't be fumbling the ball like that. First down and 10. Pavin looking to put more points on the board. Already with a 17-point po lead. Not 70. It's not there yet. <laughs> Feels like it, though, the way look Pavin's this, been playing. Look for this motion crosser here. Goes to the corner route. Nothing open. Good defense by Tony. A bright spot for Tony there. Able to get the stop on first down. If you're Tony, you got to stop the bleeding somehow. Yeah, and the thing that hurts the most is Pavin's going to get ball at half, too. You know, it really hurts for Tony. you got to try to create a turnover or something here if you can. Luck dropping back, stepping up, looking for Tyreek Hill, left side, why not drop it in the bucket? We got red zone offense for the defending club champ. Just an excellent dot right there. He clicks on on the wheel route, swerves it, makes a catch on the sideline, just great stick work, great everything all around right there by Pavin. 
JD, do you have a favorite route in this game? Because the wheel route, or that, that little like slot fade wheel route, it might be my favorite. Yeah, it's a good one. I love the halfback wheel, obviously. It's one of my favorite plays. A lot of people know that. Nice defense right there. And if you're popping, taking three here is perfectly fine. That's all you need to do. Run this clock out. If you're popping, are you thinking about just giving it to Tony Pollard, who's been able to put two yeah. touchdowns on the board? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I'd probably hit him with a sweep right here to the right side, see what you can do with him. That's exactly what he does. Cuts it back inside. Boy, he might have had it outside. Yeah, Nick, he had the outside perfectly right there. I think he would have had a touchdown, honestly, if he took it out a little bit more. Cuts back inside. And looks like he wants to use more of this clock and just get out of here with three. He's going to take a timeout. Maybe trying to get one more run. Be a safe pass in. But you think about it, you take a field goal here, you have a 20 point lead getting ball at the half. Yeah, this is me, I do another sweep to the left. You've had so much success with that sweep. Might as well give it a 20 Pollard, see what happens. If not, you take your three and you go up 20. Tony Pollard put on a show on Sunday. Zeke had a great game, then Pollard just came in and just put up 100 yards himself. Third down at seven. He's gonna drop back to pass. Looking for the scene, that's Marvin Harrison with some beautiful footwork, looking like Fred Astaire in the back of the end zone. Yeah, just a great play right there. I saw it from the beginning. He burned everyone back of the end zone. Great pass lead with that dashing dead eye. And this is just all Pavin. 31 to seven right now. Phenomenal performance by the three-time Raiders Club champion. Is there anything worse, TD? I know it, you, it hasn't happened to you a lot. Is there anything worse than being in a game like this where you're just outmatched, not playing your game, and you still got a half to go? Yeah, it, it hurts, man. It really does. You never want to be in that situation. Especially when you made it so far, you know, you're in the final 16 of the club championship. If you take a look at this replay, it just hits him in the back of the end zone on that streak route. Great play. Listen, I've been in this situation plenty. It does hurt. <laughs> this is when I turn off yeah. my Xbox and I go play something else. Yeah, it's tough, man. You make it all the way here to the final 16 and you don't play your best game. Definitely hurts. Especially coming off such a great performance at the Classic. Top 15. So far, it's all Pavin. Been like a juggernaut out there. Luck on our right side. He might have the corner out, but he's looking for anything down the field. Throws it into quadruple coverage. Only one red jersey back there, and we're going to hit halftime. It is all Pavin, your three-time Raiders club champion, your defending club champion, 31-7 to seven at the half in firm control. And guys, don't forget the Madden Game Day program. You can get exclusive Mutt content, including the man you're watching put on a show right now. You can get Coach Pavin out there. They are available in fantasy packs. Make sure you grab them now. These are some great items to have on your yeah, Mutt team. Yeah, they are. P coach Pavin, he's using his own coach on his team right now. You can go out in there and get it. See the dominant performance he's putting up right now. The Snickers Lounge still rocking, still full. <laughs> These guys are locked in. Look at RG back there. He's looking like a player on those seats. But we got a half of game left. It is not over. If you're young Tony, what are you trying to do here in the second half to try to salvage and maybe make a comeback? Well, the first thing you got to do is try to get a stop here. You got to try to force a turnover or something. You're down 24. Pavin getting the ball, man. It's going to be rough. He's probably going to run some of this clock. You got to get a turnover if you're young Tony. And if you're Pavin, this may be one of the downsides of having the big lead. He's not a runner. Even though we've seen Tony Pollard with two touchdowns, he's not that ground and pound going to milk the clock. Are you thinking if you're Pavin, is he still going to be passing the ball here, even with the big lead? No, I don't think he is. He looks like he's going to come out in some I-form right here, maybe some I-form tight, I-form wing. But he's had so much success with that sweep all game. I'd like to see him go back to that and use some of the clock. Tony hasn't had an answer for that at all. You gotta think the nice part about that sweep out of the gun bunch is it's not a, a formation you can load up against the run because you can still hit that pass over the top. Yeah, it looks the same as all his pass plays. That's the beauty of running, you know, having a scheme. That's the beauty of Madden, you know, building a scheme with different plays you can, that look the same. That's Rex Burkhead getting the carry, the 10 cap New England Patriot. He'll pick up two. Yeah, uh, popping with a little smirk right there. I don't think he meant to run the ball with Burkhead right there. Uh, picks up two yards. See if he goes back to this I form tight now, I form wing. Like I said, I'd like to see him go to that sweep. TD, it's 31 to 7. Pavin is good enough that you wouldn't think he'd be blowing lead. Is there a chance, though, of being too conservative? Uh, yeah, there always is, but I mean, when you're up 24 and with ball, it, there's really no it's worries. Pretty tough. You really don't have any worries right now. You're just trying to get this clock and get out of here. 
You can see him using that entire play clock down under 4.20 to go. Aikens in motion, he'll give it to Tony Pollard, not Rex Burkhead, and there goes Pollard! There goes Pollard inside the 30! His taillights driving off to the distance! Three touchdowns for the non-grounded pound Pavin! Yeah, huge run right there by Pavin. I mean, he hasn't even had to pass. This has been the Tony Pollard show, which you would never expect from Pavin, one of the best passers in the world, but it's been super easy on offense running the ball for Pavin. Boy, who would have thought that coming into this game, Pavin with the number 30 out of 32 ranked rushing offense would put three touchdowns on the ground with Tony Pollard. Yeah. I mean, look at this one more time. There's really nothing too fancy about this. It's just good blocking up front and Pollard with the breakaway yeah, speed. Yeah, he doesn't even get touched. Just easy pick and drop the middle, a little stutter and goes to the end zone for a huge run. Huge touchdown. Pavin looking dominant. The floodgates are open. 38 to 7. Pavin on top. Tony, nice play on first down, get near midfield. Yeah, nice play right there. Goes to that mesh post with the streak over the middle in the seams versus one versus uh 146. And now if you're Tony, you know, you gotta get something for your confidence. Look for maybe a corner out here. Goes to that wide receiver post. He does have that corner route, but he's gonna take Harrison underneath. And Harrison's gonna take a big hit from but from who else but <laughs> Shaq Griffin, who's been all over the field. Yeah, that Shaq Griffin's been a monster for Pavin. Definitely the MVP of his team so far. Clock ticking down. Now under three minutes to go. All right, guys, join us tomorrow, starting at three o'clock Eastern. We got eight more hours of this Madden Club Championship. You may see more defense like we've seen from Pavin Wilson with the pick. And Wilson's in open space. Luck able to run him out of bounds. Pavin can do no wrong. Yeah, just dominant on defense. I mean, great click on to pick that off. Nice little run back. And, you know, just it's just a route right now for Pavin, the three-time Raiders Club champion. Not much else to say, but just a phenomenal performance. It's a route. Pavin is hot. He's on fire. He's a hot route master right now. <laughs> and he hasn't even had to throw the ball. It's another one of those games, TD, where he hasn't really had to show anything. Yeah, like we saw with Joke's first game today versus Deliverance. He didn't have to show much, just that QB blast. And same thing here with Pavin, just running the ball with Tony Pollard. Out of some different formations, not having to do too much. Getting ready for his matchup versus Drini. Boy, and let's start thinking about the stacked Final four in the AFC. Drini with two belts. Pavin with a belt. Skimbo with three belts. And Joke, the one without a belt, but everybody says he should have a belt. Yeah. That is a power four, and that's just in the AFC. Yeah, you got to think that might be the best final four on, on one side that we've seen, in it, let alone any tournament. I mean, just four of the best players in the world. I'm excited for that one, Nick. Well, fourth down and three. A 40-yard field goal to put 41 points on the board. And if you're young Tony, TD, are these games, I mean, I know it depends on the person, but for you personally, are these games easier to get over than close losses where maybe one mistake changed it? Or is this as, as tough of a loss as it gets, knowing that you got completely outplayed? Yeah, every loss hurts, but get blown out here on the grand stage to go to the final eight definitely, I think, hurts more. You know, you want to play your best game, and sometimes you lose when you play your best game, and that happens, but when you get blown out like this, it really does hurt. Here's the great part about the game of Madden, though. You can go home, turn on that console, and it's a brand new ball game. Yeah, and that's the thing for young Tony is that, you know, he made it such a great run in the Madden Classic. He still has a chance to get to that Madden Bowl. I mean, this is a good performance to get to the Final 16 here. He's probably going to have to play draft champs, though, just to give himself a, a better chance to get into that Madden Bowl, but he definitely has an opportunity to do so. Can't hang your head at all. And I feel like watching this game, and I think a lot of people at home seeing what Pavin's been able to do, this is more commentary on how good Pavin is. I don't think Tony played particularly bad. Pavin was great click on great defensive plays. Yeah, for sure. Pavin just had an excellent plan on defense, really all it comes down to. Tony's such a talented player. I don't think Tony played his best game by any stretch, obviously, but Pavin just played phenomenal defense. Get to do it all again tomorrow, folks. Appreciate you guys who've been hanging out with us all day long. It has been a great day of action. We have seen some comebacks, some close finishes, and we are so glad you've been along for the ride, and we hope you'll join us tomorrow for another eight hours of club championship action this time. 
in the words of Evan, we're turning red to blue. NFC all day tomorrow. And there's some power matchups come tomorrow. Yeah, we got some good ones tomorrow too, man. I'm excited for those ones. As we got a Fours up, head in the chat. Listen, it has been all poppin. It is time for the fourth quarter coming up. It is the fourth quarter, presented by Snickers. Oh, no, no, no pressure. This party's garbage. That bad, huh? It is that bad. It's like a bag of zero. Try this creamy Snickers. You can use a little smoothness. Is that one of the zeros? Get smooth with the fresh ground nut butters and creamy Snickers. Watching that Snickers commercial, he's saying, it's, is it that bad? It is that bad right now for Tony. It is all popping here in the fourth quarter, 41 to seven. We had an interesting talk, TD, about who's the favorite coming into this one. A lot of people talking about Henry, who we're going to see tomorrow, Skimbo, the three-time belt champion, Joe Drini. Pavin might somehow be getting sort of lost in that favorite conversation. Yeah, a little bit, but I think all four guys that were favorited in the AFC made it out. Um, I definitely agree with you, though, that Pavin doesn't get the respect as far as those other guys are concerned, but he's right there in that class. And, you know, if he goes back, comes here and repeats, I mean, then you, there's nothing you could ever say again about him. Here's what I will say. I don't know if there will be a win as impressive as this one, considering how much respect there is for young Tony his performance of the Classic, how good we know he is. The fact that Pavin is sitting here with a 34-point lead, that's unbelievable. Yeah, excellent point, Nick, because that he's played dominant. He's making a statement right here saying that I deserve to be in that category with the Skimbos, with the Jokes, with the Dreenies. He's definitely uh, making a case right now to be up there. Tony just going to have to chuck this one out of bounds. 14 at 23, 144, a touchdown and four INTs. One of those went back for a touchdown. They all got turned into scores. Yeah, they did. And third and five here. Tony in no rush, just trying to, you know, get a couple positive yardage plays, see, see if he can get something going. Staying in the pocket this time with Luck. Dancing around, looking for Marvin Harrison. Just a lot of traffic over there. Looked open for a second, but then everybody converged. Yeah, just nothing there. Tony just trying to make a play. And rolling out, trying to throw something up. But just nothing going on. Pavin just playing such good defense. Here we go. Nice play right there by Tony, but obviously too late. Is there anything such as a, a moral victory here late in the game if you're able to get a touchdown on? Or are you just trying to get out of this game with you know, maybe a score to cut into this lead? I think that play call right there answers your question for you. Just hand it off to CJ, get some positive yards, use this clock, and get out of here. Tough to get a moral victory at this point, but like I said, like we said, you know, Tony, nothing to hang your head on if you're young Tony, man. Just ran into a buzzsaw whose name is Pavin. Here's the other thing that's fun that we've been watching all day through these eight hours. How different the meta looks right now compared to how it did, let's say, four weeks ago, even two weeks ago. Yeah, 100%. Nice little rollout there, nice little play. But like you said, Nick, for sure, everything's changed now. We see a lot more passing than we saw at the beginning of the year. A lot of this West Coast, Gun Bunch, Andrew Luck, Lamar Jackson, Steve Young even, Russell Wilson, we've seen it all from the passing standpoint. Hey, there we go, Tony. Nice pass back in the end zone. He's into double digits and cutting into this lead. But you can see from that reaction, that says everything. Yeah, it does. Nice play right there. Hits the seam over the middle for the touchdown. See if Tony goes with an onside kick just for fun here. Looks like he will. You love to see that. You don't want to see anyone ever give up. No quit. No quit in Tony. We know his story of his whole life. Never any quit in that kid. And we, sh it's, we see it here again. No quit from young Tony. And if there's one great part about the club championships, it's, you know, it's that, that he's got family here, not just in the Madden community, his EMB bros. You know, everybody's going to get to hang out the next couple of days and enjoy the rest of the action. You know he wishes he was playing, but there's not a yeah. better tournament to maybe get eliminated from than one with so many people out here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like we said, he brought his dad, who supports him so much, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, too. Beautiful to see a father support a son like that. My dad used to travel with me to tournaments when I was younger. You love to see that type of stuff. Got to give you flashbacks seeing support like that. Is two minute warning, 41 to 14. Hold that up to a mirror. It still says 41 to 14. Just like that. Hand off to Pollard, right side. 
Boy, look at that stat line. 11, 134, and three touchdowns for an offense that doesn't run the ball. Yeah, it's fourth and four right here for Pavin. Look for him to come out in this I form tight, just run the ball a little bit. You know, because if you don't get this first down, it really doesn't matter. I think, I think we'll see uh, probably a dive, maybe a stretch here. He's probably going to run this down and hike at one, honestly. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see a dive up the middle. Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard, who's had a phenomenal game for Pavin, which you don't expect, like we said. Yeah, hikes at one. Gets the first down. That'll do it right there, Nick. Just a Dominant. great run. Dominant performance. I mean, just absolutely impressive. And at only 19 years old, we talk about the youth in this game. I mean, Pavin really is the class of that youth right now. Yeah, that's what's crazy to me. He's still only 19 years old, and he's basically a veteran in the game. Over 130,000 in career winnings already at the age of 19. That is insane. Handshakes, and you know Pavin's sitting there talking to Tony going, listen, man, been there. Sometimes the game just doesn't work for you. 41 to 14, he will move on to the next round. Let's take a look at how this game went down. If you're a fan of the Oakland Raiders and you're a fan of Pavin, you're going to be a fan of these highlights. It started out bad for young Tony. Early in this game, it was Shaq Griffin taking this one to the house. Yeah, big pick six by Shaq Griffin. Shaq Griffin was the key to the victory for Pavin. Just such a beast for him. Huge pick six right there to start the game. Up 10-7, and then Tony Pollard off the interception. One play later, he's into the end zone. Yeah, nice little sweep left there. Nice little dive here. It gets untouched to the end zone. Huge 70-yard run. And this was the sealer, obviously, 38-7. Dominant performance. What a job from Tony Pollard. Pavin saluting his halfback, who put in work. 41-14. He makes it through. He is your AFC West champion, and he is standing by with our own Evan Rayner. Thanks so, thanks so much, Nick. Well, you know, Pavin, I mean, the audacity to just sit over here, cast with us, do a great job, then come over here, win all these games, start getting to the conference semifinals. Man, all jokes aside, how are you feeling about doing this? You're defending NFL club champion. This has got to be an awesome feeling. Yeah, I definitely feel very awesome. I had a rough game, first game versus my dude Jeff. Uh, shout out to Jeff, shout out to 818. Those are my boys. They've been helping me lab up. Um, I had a rough game, first game. You know, I didn't play the best to my ability. And, you know, just to come back and just score that many points, yeah. play great defense, and overall just, you know, win the game, it's a great feeling. I mean, you had such rhythm going into that game that a lot of people said, this is, this is a Pavin that looks like he's on form. Uh, is this the way you wanted to be playing heading into the conference semis, knowing that this is a chance to maybe repeat on the club championship? Yeah, definitely. Um, this is going to be some, some momentum for me. I know I play Drini next, you know, great competitor. He yeah. just He's hot right now. He just won that DreamHack event. He won last year's Madden Bowl. It should be a great game. Also casted with us. Oh, yeah, definitely. So now you guys are fighting for who was the best caster player. Mm -hmm. um, your run game looked great. Uh, let's take a look at the wall and just kind of go over some of these plays. One play in particular where your run just kind of set you up for success. Break it down. Uh, yeah, right there. Just got perfect blocks. And he, I believe that was like a 17-cap Devin Bush. He wasn't going to be able to make that tackle. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I just spam R1 sometimes. It, I think it makes me go fast. Henry says it doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> it, it does look like, you know, you're doing something. Yeah. So whether it works or not, it definitely seems to have worked as far as your results today. All right, looking ahead, obviously you're in the conference semis. You've got good competition ahead of you as well. Um, looking forward to that, what, do, what are your thoughts on just that next step? Just going to go back to the hotel, uh, lab up some more, find some good run defense. You know, me, Henry's going to help me out. I'm going to help him out for tomorrow and just find some more dots that Drini isn't you know, prepared for. Now, you're 19 years old. You've won over $100,000. That's a pretty unreal stat for a lot of 19-year-olds out there in the world. What does this mean in, in a bigger picture for you and Madden and what you've been able to accomplish so far uh, in your career? Uh, I, just, I just go out here, have fun. Every time I'm here, I just have, try to have fun. I don't even look at that number because you know, I just want to get more wins, more victories. And overall, I hope this leads to a branding for myself. I'm going to be on that DC, but I'm not even thinking about DC right now. I'm going to be on the DC grind streaming when I get back home, hopefully 100K richer. <laughs> there it is. I like the confidence. You're playing Drini. Talk to me just quickly about him. Obviously, anything matchup specifically you're looking forward. Obviously, you're going you're gonna to work with Henry to lab up and get ready. Uh, I believe this is going to be our first MCS game. So, you know, if over, over the past couple of years, I haven't really matched up with that one juggernaut, I would yeah. say. Maybe Joke last year was probably like my best opponent I've played so far. 
Um, but Drini was going to be right up there, you know, and if I win that, it's going to be Joker, Skimble on the other side. This AFC is very stacked. And he wants to play you, too. He mentioned a little oh, bit. Yeah, He'd rather I take you that. down that over there. on the way. So, yeah. Bobbin was listening, Drini out there, and I'm sure you guys will both be ready for a good matchup. Congratulations, man. Thank you, man. Again, we will see you in the conference semis. And for more on that, let's get it over to Nick and Ty to hear their thoughts about Pavin advancing. Evan, 